Welcome to Unwired Learning. In this video, we're going to talk about the MOSFET with a very small applied voltage across the drain to source. The objective of this video is to develop an equation for the current flow in a MOSFET. In particular, what we want is to consider the current flow as it goes from the drain region over to the source region. And this will occur in this induced channel that is a result of the voltage from gate to source as we learned about in the MOS capacitor video. When we consider this channel, we recognize that that channel is roughly rectangular if the voltage from drain to source is very small. And therefore, we're going to find that this problem is actually very similar to a drift current problem. So let's extrapolate this channel into a problem just by itself. So here in this picture, we can get an idea that this is very similar to a semiconductor resistor problem with an applied voltage where the current going through this device is drift current. And we know that drift current is the volume charge density times the drift velocity of the carriers times the cross-sectional area of the device. In this case, this is the cross-sectional area. For a semiconductor, we can think of the volume charge density as the charge of the particular carrier and the number of carriers, the volume number of carriers, either N or P. If it's electrons, it's N holes P. For drift velocity, we can think of the drift velocity as being the multiplication of the electric field and the mobility of those carriers. And what electric field are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the electric field that is induced because of the voltage from drain to source that will be going in this direction. So how does the idea of drift current from a semiconductor resistor problem relate to that of an induced channel? Well it's very similar actually. The only difference will be that instead of looking at carriers due to doping, we're going to look at induced carriers due to the voltage from gate to source or gate to body. The first thing that we need to do is recognize the charge density. This is very similar to what we did in the problem of the MOS capacitor, where we had the magnitude of Q as being equal to C aux times the width times the length of the device times the over voltage applied to that device. In this case though, we actually want to make this value Q independent of the length L. And so therefore we're gonna move L over to the left side and that means that what we have is a value of magnitude of Q divided by this unit length L is equal to C aux times the width times the over voltage. And this value of Q over L is one step in getting the volume charge density of this device. The other step that we can do in determining the current is to look at the electric field that's generated. Well, the magnitude of the electric field that's generated because of the voltage from drain to source is equal to the voltage from drain to source divided by the length of the device because the electric field is across the length L here. Now we can combine the two ideas of charge and electric field and look at our drift current equation over here and this relationship of drift velocity and we can come up with a final equation for the current through this device. In this case we can say that the current from ds is C aux times the width times the over voltage times the mobility of the carriers. In this case, let's consider this to be a p-type substrate with an n-type induced channel. So the mobility of carriers is the n carriers times the electric field, which is given as Vds divided by L. And all we have to do now is rearrange this equation a little bit to make it more convenient looking. So first we're going to put the value mu n. Then we're going to put C aux. And then we're going to combine the distance metrics width divided by length. And then we're going to put our two voltages. The over voltage applied from gate to source. And the value VDS. And this is pretty much the final equation for the current from drain to source in this induced channel. But there's a few things we can remember about drift current 
In fact, we might recall that drift current is, in fact, a relationship of Ohm's law. If we look at this, on the left side we have a current, on the right side we have a voltage, and therefore everything else must be related to a resistance. If V equals IR, then this must be a value that is 1 over an, a resistance. In fact, we'll call this resistance R sub ds. And if you recall our terms from circuit theory, this is a conductance value that we'll call G sub ds. To simplify matters a little bit more, we will also consider another relationship, and that is mu n c ox times width over length. And this relationship is known as the transconductance value sub k sub n. Therefore, we can actually write the final equation in terms of these simplifications. We can say that IDS, with a small value of voltage from drain to source, with a rectangular shaped induced channel, is equal to K sub N VOV VDS. And this is our final equation. And with this final equation, we conclude this video of unwired learning.